when I was the Minister of Employment, in effect, I was the Minister of Unemployment because my whole toolbox, which was very well filled with all kinds of programs and stuff, uh, they were all sort of geared towards fighting unemployment rather than promoting employment and finding new ways of linking innovation into new jobs. How is fighting unemployment different from providing employment? Because lots of, of the tools that we have in fighting unemployment has to do with uh, things like the unemployment insurance system, the public employment service, uh, and all kinds of things where we meet people who are frustrated with having to be let go from their old position. Now, when we talk about innovation, we know from economic science that innovation explains three quarters of economic growth over time. But most of it is incremental innovation that uh, uh, affects productivity growth. So is there a way for us to take some of this um, um, uh, economic factors that innovation influences and turn it into new jobs instead? Is it good? Uh, what do we do? What are the policy measures? And frankly, we don't really know. And that's why this conference is an in important contribution to finding out. Can innovation be planned, or does innovation by its nature happen kind of spontaneously? I think you're absolutely right. It, it happens spontaneously. And the best advice for national governments is probably to stay out of the way. Are they taking that advice? No. <laughs> no, and that's the problem. Because since um, we, there's very little research done in economics on the, this connection between innovation and jobs. And the very fact that we have very strict silos in politics, in media, and in research, and in business, where people who are doing innovation can't talk to people who are doing uh, uh, growth economics, for instance. They can't speak the same language. They don't have the same models. They don't understand each other. When we talk about government policy, there's often a factor of uh, risk avoidance. Hmm. Like, uh, you don't know that the thing will work. Maybe it will, but how much risk are you willing to take? especially in a place where you might get voted out of office. You're absolutely on the spot. I think that's the, the, the real problem that, I mean, I'm a recovering politician. I know exactly what you're talking about. Every politician wants to become re-elected. That's the whole point, right? So you have a, a sort of a four-year time horizon where you um, uh, look at what you can do to, to maximize your outcome in four years. Th and that's an issue because lots of the things that we believe are important for innovation leading to job creation, things like education, for instance. Now, if you do changes to the educational system today, I mean, the, the real effects of that aren't seen until 10, 20 years from now. So um, there are very small incentives for politicians to do the real structural reforms that are needed. What do you think is the most pressing problem facing Western civilization today? <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, there are quite a few. Um, certainly um, the fiscal problems that many countries fight right now is an immediate problem because if that isn't solved, um, our economies will bring, you know, come to a halt. Uh, and if that happens, um, people aren't getting the pensions or the health care or the schooling that, that they are accustomed to or want. And that is a real problem because if that happens, that will probably lead to um, in, in not perhaps next year, but uh, along the line, riots, uh, people feeling disenfranchised from, from society. Uh, you find xenophobia, everything that we do not like. Revolutions? Uh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. That, ca that could happen. It's, it's not, I mean, it's far away right now, but you never know. If you have, like in Spain, where you have youth unemployment over 50%, I mean, it's a wonder that, they haven't, that you haven't seen more uh, fighting in the streets, to be honest. Are you optimistic that things are moving in the right direction and that if enough people work on the problem, maybe uh, <coughs> they'll get a handle on it before it swamps us? Actually, I'm always an optimist. And to be frank, um, you know, a, a couple of years back, the only people talking about innovation were the propeller hats, you know, uh, innovators, you know, people like that. Now everybody talks about innovation. And, and in that respect, uh, the, you know, there's been a, a great uh, leap forward. We talk in Europe, you know, uh, there's a lot of discussion about how bureaucratic, bureaucratic uh, uh, Brussels is, like Washington. But to be frank, in Europe, we've thrown bombs at each other for a thousand years. Now we throw papers. I mean, it's a major leap forward. 